Hello. You said you were. Well, we call that. Oh, Lakina, who's wrong? You can't be here today, though. No, I know. No, you want to no, kiss. I'm going to have time to yeah, have you in the show. Come today. on then. Come on. So, Stay um, there for a second. You're okay for a few seconds. I'll let you out in a minute. Yeah. So, okay. Nick, we've got quite a lot coming up today. We need to work through. Yeah, so okay. We've got two interviews. We've got right. Josh Key, Anderson uh, yeah. Coppola. And then we've got Des Minto, a drummer from one of the biggest Christian rock bands. How long have we got? What, to do the introductions? No, to do the whole show. It's about half an hour. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so we have to do All it fairly right quickly. Okay, yep, um, yep. Snappy, introductions, snappy. if you introduce Josh and I introduce Des. Cool. We haven't really got a lot of time for any of that silliness today either, so just be <sighs> mindful of that. Just try and keep it snappy. Oh, just on the edge. Going oh, live in 10 oh, seconds. I let you down, I let you down. Cups down. No, be free. And so, okay. You ready? You're ready. Oh, yes. It's neat. She's pooing in the studio. <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, no. We have to go. We have to go. Oh, oh Ready? God. Three, two. Oh. Hi! Hello. Welcome, to crazy, welcome to Crazy Home. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, my, my name's Mark. And I'm Nita. And, and it's, um, it's lovely to see you. Oh, I'm so hot. I wish I had a fan. Yeah, well, it's lovely to welcome you <laughs> back for episode two. We've had loads of great feedback oh, from last week. Oh, yes, well, yes. So we were overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, overwhelmed. with that one nice email, <laughs> weren't we? Yes. It was lovely. It's so blessed. Thank you very myself. much for that oh. nice email that someone sent in to us. Thank anyway, you. we've got a great show lined up today with some great guests and great interviews. Yay. And we hope you're going to enjoy being with us uh, today, or whatever time you're watching this. So a big <laughs> welcome to you. But Nita, do you want to introduce the first guest? Because yeah. I'm just going to quickly go and do something. Um, just yeah, quickly, yeah. is okay. that all right? I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay then, yeah, guys on. and girls. Doing? Well, on, like we um, Mark said, um, we have Josh Key coming awful. up. And um, oh. yeah, he's uh, he's homegrown. He's a homegrown player. He's He's not been imported. He's actually one of our own talented um, uh, guys, and um, yeah, he's coming on now for an right. interview. So, Mark, that's great. What are you what? doing? What? You just cut to crying out loud. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, can we just go for the interview um, to Josh Key now? It's going to be great. Stick around. You'll love it. Put it down, you weirdo. In his stride from Bowman. He flashes it across goal. Exit to corner, deep into the penalty area. Turn back into the danger zone here. And there's a looping header which crashes into the roof of the net over the head of Steck. And Exeter have come behind and lead 2 1. And it's Key who gets the final touch. Mark plays it in and it's not at home. And this time it's Joshua Key with the goal. Um, he's the nicest lad you'll ever meet. Honestly, he's, he's incredible. He's, he's a, a great example of what you want a young player to, to be like. Josh, it's great to welcome you. Thank you so much for being a part of this interview today. It's great to see you. And you broke into the first team, first season in the first team. What's it like for you? Yeah, it's um, it's been quite surreal, really. Um, thinking back to I know when I was in the academy as an under under fifteen, under sixteen, I had quite a bad injury at the time. I remember thinking, is football really for me? Um, and yeah, that, having to do my scholarship there um, with Exeter and then finally getting off of my pro contract over, I was over about four or five years. So a lot of hard work has gone into it um, and a lot of sort of doubts, believing believing in myself. Um, yeah, it got me there. So excited in the place I'm in at the moment, yeah. And lots of people saying some really lovely things um, about your playing and, uh, you know, there's been quite a lot of you know buzz around about you breaking into the team it's not just like you're one of the young players coming through but it's been about the quality of you coming through but what, what's it like to get that sort of praise and that sort of affirmation and you know what, what does that feel like for you to read or to hear interviews about you like that yes um it's so encouraging really because i think being a young lad you sort of you come into the team 
um, sort of thinking you've just got to survive really. Um, and there's the old sort of saying, you know, you've got to survive before you can thrive. Um, and that's, I mean, that's quite a big thing in football, but um, yeah, it's been so nice seeing everything on Twitter, um, on Instagram, people messaging me and um, yeah, as, as, as you said earlier, it's quite surreal really um, that I've actually got to this point that I've worked for. So. Um, you just broke into the first team, but you mentioned you've been in the academy and this has been a bit of a journey for you. Have you always wanted to go into professional football? And what has that journey been like for you, preparing and being trained and prepared for this moment? What's it been like? Um, I mean, apart from when I was like three or four and I wanted to be a cowboy, I think I've always um, wanted to be a footballer. I've always loved every sport um, and football is one that, I've sort of pushed towards more, um, but yeah, so um, that that journey, um, starting as a young lad um, and pushing on to where I am now, it's it's taken a lot of um, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of um, missing out on things that I've really wanted to do that my mates have been doing, um, and yeah, I, th- I mean through it, I sort of. Regret not. I don't regret missing those things, but I I can see now that it's paid. Does it make sense to say it's paid dividends, um, and paid and yeah, paid itself to to where I am at the moment. So I'm thankful. That I, what I, are some of those disciplines, Josh? What are some of those sacrifices that you've made in order to get to where you are today? I think it's it's lots of things. It's on the weekends or on the Friday nights, just sort of laying low. Um, making sure I'm always hydrated, eating the right things. I mean, I, I occasionally have like a McDonald's and things after a game, but um, I've had to try and eat healthily um, and train my body. Sleep is a very vital thing. And as a young person, that's sort of something that I think is neglected massively. So always making sure that I'm in bed on time and have enough sleep. And those things add up in your daytime. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of things you have to miss out on such as when you're sleeping. So, Well, I think I speak for a lot of people in the city of Exeter in saying we're so glad that you didn't become a cowboy and that you have become a footballer. Uh, we're very, very pleased about that. I'm not quite sure how we'd be cheering about you being a cowboy. So that's fantastic. Um, Josh, I know that uh, last week we interviewed Lee Holmes and he told us how his faith has been such an important part of his life and his journey. And I know the same is true for you as well. And it's not just in some superstitious way. It's not like a lucky charm. But you, as a, a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, it's really a big part of your life. How does that impact upon your life? And does that impact upon your football and so on? Just talk us through that. Um, I mean, when I started off, when I did, when I became a Christian um, by my own self um i think firstly it was it was a struggle because if you think of footballers the life they often live outside of football is very opposite to what the bible tells us and what god's plan is for our lives and um i think through it i've again it's another place of surrender and sacrifice sacrificing those things but one thing that i think as i don't know what the word is but has been the best thing for me is that through football there's a lot of disappointments there's a lot of you're judged on your uh, performances each week you're judged on whether you score whether you defend if you get sent off or if you score an own goal it's that you haven't really got anything to fall back on Um, and as I said people only see your football side they don't see the side of you who you are outside of football and I think having that um Solidarity, is that the right word? Solidarity and knowing that no matter how you perform, no matter how well we do on the pitch or how badly you do on the pitch, my identity is in Christ and that through it all, none of that really matters whether I play well or not. I, I've heard some commentators, they've referred to you as a really centred, level-headed, balanced young man. That's been the way that they've talked about you. And I guess that's another language for what you're saying is the benefit of knowing that your identity is not based on whether you had a good or a bad game, but it's based on knowing that you are loved 
by God and that he values you not just because you're a good footballer but because he loves you because you're his son and that's that's such a strength in our lives isn't it yeah. um, do you ever do you ever look around in the stands well you don't see many people there at the moment but do you, do you ever think I, I wish people knew God in the way that I do yeah massively I mean when I look around the changing room um, I see the lads having a good time because they're playing well but I also when we lose or when they have a bad game I also see the side of I'm not good enough um, and sometimes I just want to put my arm around them and tell them that it doesn't really matter but then they wouldn't understand um, so yeah as you said I see the fans as well and I just I just love I just love them to know the good news well, Josh, we are delighted to be cheering you on um, as you pursue this career. And uh, we're so delighted you've had such a great start to this, your first season, the first team. And thank you for coming on and sharing some of your story with us tonight. We look forward to hearing much more from you in the months and the years ahead. But bless you, Lois, my friend. See thank you soon. Thank you. Die, die, you just back on. Oh, hey, what a, what, what a great interview. Thank you, Josh, for being part of that. Yeah. And I, I, I love you talking about sacrifice then. Yeah, he's just such a lovely guy who has sacrificed so much. When other mates of his was um, going out, uh, my, <laughs> going out, having a good time on the weekends, he was tucked up in bed early, getting them zeds in and all that sacrifice. Sometimes you just <laughs> have to give up stuff, don't you? Yeah, Mark, that was, I was saving that. I was actually saving that and... So oh, life proof. You really, Mark, I was saving it for me later. If that was a Rolo, your last Rolo, wouldn't you give it to me? Um... <laughs> oh, please, if you love me, <laughs> I know, but that's, you, you don't need that. You've. You don't need. I but need I want it. To. I know, but I want to have it as well. it as well. You can't just bring a plate of cake in front of me and stuff yourself with it and not offer me some of it for myself. You want me to sacrifice this last bit of cake for you? Yeah, yeah. I do. Well, because I love you, yeah. absolutely love you to bits. I'm going to give you my last bit of cake. Oh, really? Because that's what oh, that's you. what people do in relationships, isn't yeah. it? When you love someone, you sacrifice things. Mm. And it says in the most famous verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world. Now, you could put anybody's name in there. For God so loved Mark, for God so loved Nita, for God so loved you, that he gave his only son, that if we believe in him, mm. then we will not perish but know everlasting life. And he came to knowing that he was going to have to sacrifice his life on the cross mm. so that we could be reunited in relationship with him. That was That's, the ultimate sacrifice, wasn't it? That absolutely. he died, that he laid his life down. And that's just overwhelming. To, <laughs> get your hands up as I chop them off. That is overwhelming to know that somebody loves me enough to die for me. And of course, we've had Remembrance Week this week, which All has been deeply moving to remember mm. those who pay the ultimate price with their mm -hmm. life, not their cake, not their sleep, mm -hmm. but with their life to give us freedoms today. And that is exactly what we remember when we remember Jesus, that he gave himself for us. What an incredible sacrifice that is. It was is. like the suffering servant, some people refer him to, isn't it? That came to seek and save that which was lost. He came looking for us. And would you get your hands off? I'm telling you now, because you'll be suffering in a minute. <laughs> anyway, is there another interview coming up? There what? is. We are now delighted to go to our next interview with Des Minto, oh, who's a great musician. You're gonna love this he does one. all sorts of things, but he was for a number of years involved in one of the biggest Christian bands. And we're going to find out more about that now. So let's go to this interview with Des. Cool.
Des, we're so pleased you're able to join us tonight. Um, Des, you are um, as real as it comes. You, you're not flowery and religious, but I know God is a really important part of your life, which we'll come to in a moment. But it hasn't always been that way. And I know there was a moment in your life where you experienced some of the biggest pain and disappointment, and you were actually quite angry with God. If God is there, I'm angry with him. Can you just introduce that moment and tell us about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember vividly, like it was yesterday, being uh, being at my mum's funeral when I was a little lad. Um, my, my, my dad and I, uh, my, my sister was at university, my, my dad and I had looked after my mum, uh, who was a Christian, for about 18 months. And, and she died when I was 16. Um, and I remember um, being in... I remember being in a funeral, Mark, and, and singing this song. That there's a song there as a redeemer. Thank you, oh my father. And and people, including my dad and my sister, you know, who are watching this now probably. And um, I remember them having their hands in the air and being thankful to God and, and singing this song. And I remember just thinking, oh, is everybody around me? Do you not understand what's happened here? I, I like, are you flipping? Are you having a laugh here? I, 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 I was so angry. I wanted it. I wanted to turn the turn the pews over. I wanted to smash the blooming place up. I, I, I don't think I've ever felt anger like that in in my life, really. And there's, a, I think that anger. Many of us will resonate with that. There's a lot of frustration around. There's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of pain in life, and we understand that. And many of us will have our own stories about that moment of pain, but something happened in you that that pain became a doorway into a place of healing. Just give us a little bit of the context, how that happened. Well, it did, it did. I, 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 I think I was angry for years, really. I was angry for a lot of years and I still have my moments now. I still have my moments now of it. Uh, I, I, I can remember being invited to to along to this Christian thing called Harvest. There was a like a two thousand people, young people, got together every year, and I and I, I became very fond of it and involved with it. And in subsequent years, there was just in there was an invitation from the stage to um, to just surrender to God. And that somebody explained they explained about Jesus again and um, just about how how He's with us all the way and how how He understands. And how the, the the stuff that we're dealing with, we can hand it over to him. So rather, I, I think in that moment, I, I was crying. Mark, I, I, I lost half my body weight in tears. I think I, I, I cried for so long, and j just that that moment to start to begin the process of rather than blaming God, inviting him in to be part of the healing process, really. And did it feel like a weight lifted off you, Des, when you did that? Because you'd been carrying around this rucksack of disappointment and pain for years. And I want to keep it real. There are still, you know, as you were saying, times when you still feel those emotions. But did it feel at the moment that you, rather than run away from God or stick your fingers up to him, that you surrendered, as you put it in your language? Did it feel like something lifted off you? Oh, I, 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 I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It it, uh, it wasn't like the magic genie, right? It's not like you rub a magic genie and you get your first wish. But that moment, it, you know, when you make a real decision in here, that I just said, God, I, I, I need you. If you can come and you can work inside me and you can work through this, I need you. And it was exactly like that. It was. It wasn't fixed in an instant. But it was like I could breathe. You know, when like your full lungs can fill full of air. Oh, it was. It, it was amazing. I'll never forget it. And Des, I know that that photograph of you stood next to uh, the incredibly talented Gaza <laughs> um, when you'd won it was a footballer of the year um, in a football club in Newcastle, and that was your prize to meet him. Uh, but you never, you didn't go on to become that footballer. Um, <laughs> sorry, there's still, there's still chance for Newcastle United to call you up. I know your beloved team, but um, you actually become a drummer in a band, in a band, a Christian band that actually did really well and traveled all over the world. Um, what were some of your memories from that period of time? It's Yeah, we, we did. It's, it, it's interesting. We, we signed a record deal in 1999. 
which is quite a bit, it was a big deal at the time. We traveled over over 20 countries, I think it was 24 countries in the end. And we basically just, we did a, a rock and roll show, but it had it had Jesus in the center and we, we gave the gospel out and all that stuff. We played from like, from 20 kids in a youth group somewhere to, um, in Singapore in 2004, we sold out the National Stadium in Singapore for three nights, 20,000 people a night for three nights. Yeah. Um, but it's it's funny, Mark, it's it's the little, it's the heal, actually, it, it's the healings, right? God, um, we, we saw some amazing healings and, and not just emotional, like, um, whoa, my leg's grown stuff. Like, I, I saw a little boy have his, have his eyesight restored, Mark, that I've, that I'll, again, it's a it's a memory I'll take to my grave. That, that per, when you see parents on their knees wailing and crying, and a child literally starting to see shapes and colours, um, in, in the middle of them worshiping God, it God it, God just kind of plant. When you see stuff like that, he just like plants something in you that just makes you think, oh, um, I want some of this." I really want some of this. This is this is a real deal. It, even though it didn't happen for my mum, it happens, and I've seen it happen. And and actually, the way it happened in me, there's the healing of the heart, and yeah. And Des, you're not a you're not a flaky sort of person. That you 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 know you're multi talented. Yeah. You've got a number of different um, pies. You got your fingers in. You're a teacher. You um, own a recording studio. You work in church. Um, organizing music in church. You know, you you are. You love. You still love football. Um, you know, you are down to earth and you're real. And yet here you are talking about a kid who couldn't see receiving a supernatural miracle and being able to see again. Uh -huh. What do you think when people just look at you and think, I, I, I don't know if I believe that, you know, I don't know if I believe that, first of all, all that disappointment can just lift off someone. I don't know if I believe that someone who's blind, registered blind, can receive their sight. You know, this is just mind over matter stuff, surely. Des has lost the plot. <laughs> what do you say when people think that? Do you, do you know what? I, I, I um... My, my friends, hopefully there's some of my friends who I've invited will be watching this now, lads from footy, and 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 they know this is the sort of stuff I'll, I'll talk about if we're having a pint at the match, right? We'll talk about kids getting healed and stuff, and and I know some of them think I'm mad anyway. That that, that doesn't matter, but it's um, as as sure as this microphone is in front of me, um, I honestly believe that that this whole Jesus thing that we all learn about in school and all that that it's the real deal. It's it's the real deal and my life would not be the, the anything like the way it is now without Jesus. Brilliant. Just give one tip. If someone is thinking, um, I am quite cynical, I'm not sure if this guy's lost the plot, but what if he hasn't? What if he's not mad? What if there is something real that's happened in his life? How can they explore that themselves? They, they can exp you can explore it however you want. You, you can, when your head hits a pillow tonight, just be real before God. Just when your head hits the pillow, just say, "What, Lord? If what that Jordy bloke was talking about on the telly, if if what he experienced was real, Lord, I'd love to experience it. I'd love to. I'd love to know you. And and I guess we we've got church services. We've got there's all sorts of different ways. There's the, there's the Bible online on your phone, right? You can get you can get the Bible on your phone. There's there's loads of different ways you can check us. You can continue that adventure. Des, that's really, really helpful. Thank you for opening up your story and opening up your heart. And we pray God's blessing upon you and your family. Bless you, Lord. my friend. See you. So that was a great interview there by Des. Thank you very much for that, Des. Because mm, poop happens. And that was a pretty big poop, to be fair. And God's come to deal with our poop. And like little Mia couldn't clean up after herself. She needed help. We need help. I'm just going to put this down because it's making me feel sick and gross. You know, as she does that, there is a verse in the Bible that says, and you think this is before they knew about the geography of the world. It doesn't say as far as the north is from the south, God removes our mess from us. 
it says as far as the east is from the west. Now you can measure the distance between the north and the south because there's poles there, but there's no east pole or west pole. Basically, if you travel east, you keep traveling east forever around the globe and it never ends. And God says in his word, as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he removes the mess of our lives. It's a, an old religious word that the Bible uses called sin. And it means those things that we've done that are against God's best and against God's purposes and against the expectations that God has for a loving relationship. But he removes those just like Nia just got rid of that mess there. Uh, although it's still in the room, yeah. um, ours isn't, it's gone. That's it's right, it's gone, gone because that's how good he is, that's how clever he is. He's a faithful, he's a forgiving and he's a forgetful God. So he's faithful to us even when we do wrong things and we do wrong things every single day. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, even when we're unfaithful, God remains faithful to us because he cannot deny himself, he cannot deny who he is, that's his nature. So even when we've been unfaithful, he remains faithful to us. It says he forgives us when we confess our sins. Like Mark just said, he forgives, but he also forgets. He wipes the slate clean. It says in the Bible that he remembers our sins no more. So we can come with the most hideous crime, the most hideous thing that we've done, that thing that we just can't forgive ourselves for, and we bring it to God and, and genuinely say, God, will you forgive me? And he forgives, he forgives. He forgives that which we struggle to forgive um, ourselves and he gives us the strength to be able to forgive because he's forgiven us. He wants us to be able to forgive as well and he makes no mention of our past sins. He forgets it. He presses delete and he resets us to start again clean and brand new. So our goal of these broadcasts is to show you ordinary people that have discovered this love of God, this faithfulness, a, a God who's committed to us, who wants to be part of our lives, part of our everyday, ordinary lives. And he's not just come for the religious, he's come for everybody. Mm. And in fact, you know, if I went to the doctors and I said, I'm sorry, but um, you know, I'm not well. Uh, and they said, well, you know, this is not the appropriate place for you. Uh, it would make sense. But when Jesus came, he came for those who needed a saviour. And, and we all that, that's need all a saviour. And that's all of us, Ordinary people, we, we all, all need, need help. Mm. And so we hope this has been helpful to you. And do let us know the email address on the screen. And in a moment, I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. It's not a prayer to become a Christian, but it's a prayer that invites God to come and show us that he's real to show us that he loves us and it's an invitation to start a journey and he likes invitations he doesn't just gate crash uh, our door he, he knocks wants... on it and he waits for us to open up the door and when he comes knocking on your door you just sense it because you just you just sense something inside and he and when we uh, when he knocks on the door we just welcome him in open the door to him yeah and so this prayer is a simple prayer that says god would you just come in and be a part of my life and so thank you for all those who've been part of the show today to josh to des i've been mark i'm nita and there was little mia as well uh, and we but most of all we thank you for tuning in and being a part of this today but let's pray this simple prayer as our final act and it goes like this jesus I thank you that you love me. I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if you're there, if you're real. But as I've seen you looking like you're real in the lives of other people, I'd love to know some of that in my life. So would you come and show me that you're real and that you love me? I welcome you in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Thank you for being with us. Like and share. Get the news out about this as much as possible. And we'll see you the same time see you next, next week. week. God bless. Bye.